the other avenue I was considering was, was using probability inside the algorithm in order to get the results which are true always but with a certain small, very small probability of getting a wrong result. So for any particular problem you are getting the correct result quickly every time and surely and surely subject to probability of being wrong which can be made exponentially very easily exponentially small i had an example which by now is maybe vacuous namely at the time it was not yet known whether fermat's big conjecture is true or not and i had this mental game of somebody coming and saying here i have four numbers x y z and n each of them very very large each of them with thousands of digits and i claim that x to the n plus y to the n is z to the n and the person claims i proved that equality falsifying a counterexample to Fermat's last theorem. And now the numbers are so large that even by approximate computations, no matter how many digits you do in that approximation, you get agreement. However, by using randomness and using random, randomly chosen prime numbers, you are able, not very large prime numbers, also prime numbers of just a few thousand digits, uh, no, a few hundred digits, you are able to show him wrong because mod p, it turns out that this is not equal. So that was a proof of, in this case, a negative result by use of randomization and greatly simplifying the computation. I had that and I gave a public lecture in 1974 in Stockholm. There were hundreds of people uh, present and the lecture was on the natural limitations of artificial intelligence. Then I was at the time in an uh, administrative position as rector, academic head in the European sense of the Hebrew University. In 1975, I finished that position and I went for a year to MIT for a year. At MIT, I met Gary Miller, who found a polynomial time for test, polynomial time algorithm for testing primality, which was based, however, on the extended Riemann hypothesis, which to this day is still an open problem. And I said to myself, can I use probability in order, random, now it's called, I call it the probabilistic algorithm, but randomization in order to settle that question. And I found, I learned to me that uh, Solovey Strassen were working on the same problem at the time. I found a simple randomized algorithm for testing primality, only using our old friend Vermas theorem, which was uh, very satisfying. So I also used the method to solve another, to simplify solution of another problem. Suppose you have a finite number of points given by their coordinates, 
and in the plane, say, and you want to find A or the A nearest pair, two points PI and PJ, given by their coordinates XI, YI, XJ, YJ, so that the distance between these two points is the smallest among all possible and and of uh, choose two distances. Now people had a classical algorithm solving that problem in time n log n. I have shown that by using randomization you can solve it in time O n. Linear constant times n. I gave a lecture in 1976 in January at a symposium organized by now at Carnegie Mellon. And the paper appeared in the book of that symposium. After the lecture, I went down and maybe 20 people joined around me and said, well, this is very nice but really very limited in scope because the concept you used for the primality test which is witnesses to compositeness not to primality to compositeness is really only appropriate for that problem and only Joe Traub and amongst these 10 or 20 people were some of the most famous computer scientists at the time some of whom are still very alive and very famous today. Only Zotorov said, no, no, this is a groundbreaking idea which is going to change the use of randomness in algorithms, inside algorithms, is going to change the face of computer science.